In this final video for lecture 35, I want to talk about how we can solve radical inequalities. What if we have an inequality that involves a radical of some kind? Take the cube root of 2x squared minus x is greater than x. So what I want us to do is I want us to solve the appropriate equation, right? If we replace the inequality with an equality, right? Whoops. If we take the cube root of 2x squared minus x equals x, let's just solve the equation. This will help us find the markers here. In which case, if we then cube both sides to get rid of the cube root on the left, so we cube both sides, we end up with the polynomial equation 2x squared minus x equals x cubed. Um, this is the polynomial equation. I want to set one side equal to 0, so we're going to take x cubed minus 2x squared plus x equals 0. Um, so what I did is I moved... I moved all the terms to the right-hand side, and then I flipped the equation around. If you don't like that, we can put the zero on the left-hand side. Not such a big deal there. Uh, so we, then we need, we need to factor the polynomial there. I'm looking at x cubed minus 2x squared plus x. You can factor out the common divisor of x, leaving behind x squared minus 2x plus 1, for which then x squared minus 2x plus 1 I see is a perfect square trinomial. You're going to get x times x minus 1 squared, like so. Okay? And so this is going to give us our markers, right? In which case, we then have these two numbers to pay attention to. We have x equals 0, and we have x equals 1. These are the numbers to be concerned about. Now, many ways, as I've described this in the past, is we could try to... We could try to graph this thing, right? So, but the issue is, well, what would you be graphing right here? We'd have to graph the function. You know, we have to graph the function... The, you know, f of x equals the cube root of 2x squared minus x minus x, right? Uh, in which case, then we're trying to figure out when is this thing greater than equals or greater than zero, right? So we want above the x-axis. That can be a little bit of a challenge, right? This is this is a way more complicated thing. Now, this function can be very difficult to graph, right? With definitely without a graphing calculator, there's so much going on there. What can we do instead? Well, actually. I think it's been a lot easier if we pay attention to our equation over here. What if we actually did make it an inequality, right? We had this greater than x going on right here. Well, when you cube both sides, this is an increasing function. So it doesn't change the inequality. So it's still going to be pointing to the left. 2x squared minus x is greater than x cubed. And so if we follow through on all of these things, right, we then have to graph the function f of x equals x times x minus 1 squared, um, when that's when that's less than zero so we're looking for things that are below the x-axis now remember the end behavior of this thing is going to be approximately x cubed so it's going to point up on the right and down on the left and then it'll cross the x-axis at x and it'll touch at x equals one so if you get a picture it looks something like the following and if we want to be less than zero we're talking about those portions where we're below the x-axis there and so the solution to this thing would then look like negative infinity to zero. So graphing saves the day again, but we didn't graph the rational function, uh, the radical function. We actually graphed the polynomial that turned out to be equivalent to it. Let's look at another example of this. So take the inequality 1 minus the square root of 5x minus 9 is greater than or equal to x minus 8. So when it comes to solving inequalities, again, my recommendation is always you worry about the equation first. 1 minus the square root of 5x minus 9 is equal to x minus 8. On the previous example, we were able to keep track of we're able to keep track of the inequality sign, but that's because we had an odd radical. If you have an even one, things are a little bit more difficult because at some point we're going to have something like the this 5x minus 9 inside the square root, and this is going to be like maybe greater than or equal to something. Like what it is, I'm not exactly sure. But then we square both sides. But what does the square do to the inequality? Well, the problem is when you take y equals x squared, this function is increasing so over here you would keep the inequality but over here it's decreasing it actually would flip the inequality around so because it, it, it both flips and preserves it you have to break up the domain it gets really really complicated so it's best just to kind of procrastinate that decision until the end just worry about the equation where those subtleties don't even come into play here so if we solve this we're going to subtract one from both sides we end up with the square root of 5x minus 9 is equal to, sorry, the negative square root of 5 minus 9 is equal to x minus 9 right here. We're going to times both sides by negative 1, so we get the square root of 5x minus 9 is equal to 9 minus x. And now we have to square both sides. On the left-hand side, we do have to, on the right-hand side, we'll have to foil it out. We get 5x 
minus 9 is equal to 81 minus 18x plus x squared. So we're going to add 9 to both sides. Uh, we're actually going to subtract 5x as well. So add 9 minus 5x, because so, now it's a quadratic equation. So we get x squared minus 23x plus 90 x equals zero. So since it's quadratic, we want to set the right-hand side equal to zero so we can factor it or use the quadratic formula. We'll get, notice that factors of 90, we can take five and 18. That adds up to be 23. So we get five minus x and five minus 18 is equal to zero. And so that then tells us the solutions to the equation will be five and 18, right? And so now we're tempted, okay, the next step is then we use these markers to start graphing this thing. But remember, we solved a radical equation. And it's a radical equation involving square roots that there might be party crashers. Does five belong here? Does 18 belong here? It's hard to say. We have to check these answers here. And so if we check them, if you take the left-hand side and you plug in five, you're going to get one minus the square root of five times five minus nine. That should look like one minus, you're going to get 25 minus nine, which is going to give you one minus the square root of 16 which that gives you one minus four, which is negative three. Okay, the right-hand side, that will look like we're supposed to take five minus eight, which is equal to negative three, that passes. So five is in fact a solution to the equation. What about 18, could there be two? Um, in that situation, you take the left-hand side, which is equal to one minus the square root of five times 18 minus nine, in which case, like we saw before, 5 times 18 is 90. So you get 90 minus 9. We then get 1 minus the square root of 81, which gives us 1 minus 9, which gives us a negative 8. All right, so no domain issues going on there. Uh, the right-hand side should look like x minus 8. So we're supposed to take 18 minus 8, which gives us 10, which is not equal to negative 8. So this one didn't work out at all. So we have to remove 18 from consideration. Great. So that's an important step. You don't want to forget that one. So now in terms of the markers, we just have one marker, uh, which is going to happen at, it's going to happen at five. Now that's not exactly true. In terms of the graph here, we also do need to consider the domain. Because if we come back to the original inequality, one minus the square root of 5x minus 9, this is supposed to be greater than or equal to x minus 8. You'll notice, for example, if I plug in x equals 0, then you're going to get the square root of negative 9, which is not a real number. And so you're, 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 the left-hand side is not a real number. How can it be greater than a real number? That, 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 that's a problem there, right? So there are some domain issues that we have to consider. So if we take 5x minus 9, set that greater or equal to 0, which would be the domain of the left-hand side, we get 5x is greater than or equal to 9, or x is greater than or equal to 9 fifths. So we do also have to include this left boundary point, 9 fifths, like so. And so in terms of graphing it, we do want to, that, that, that 9 fifths does have to be included, right? The left-hand side would be defined at 9 fifths. It would just equal 1, which is a possibility. And you'll notice that if I take 9 fifths and I subtract 8 from it, and you actually get a negative number, that actually would pass off. So like this over here is actually part of the solution set. So I'm actually very tempted to include this picture right here. If I chose something bigger than five, uh, you'll see that actually it doesn't work out. The test value doesn't work. You could also try to approach this by graphing. Uh, if you thought of this function right here, f of x, and this function right here is g of x, we're trying to see when f of x is greater than g of x. Now what's going on right here? We have a radical function, the square root of function, which we've done some type of horizontal stretch, some type of horizontal shift. Um, it's been reflected across the, the x-axis and we also shifted up by one. So your picture is gonna look something like the following. We have this decreasing square root function, kind of like this. On the other hand, if you take y equals x minus eight, well, that's just gonna be a line that's increasing. And so it's gonna look something like this. They'll intersect at x equals five. And so you can see where is the, where is the radical greater than the line that's gonna happen right here. So you can still solve this one by graphing, or you can use some test points. That's always an option. So in the end, we see that our solution would look like 9 fifths comma 5. So 9 fifths will be included. Uh, that, that is part of the domain, and that does make the left-hand side greater than the, the right-hand side. And if you plug in 5, that'll make the left and the right both uh, equal to each other. And equality is acceptable in this situation. So we do pass off 
that both five and nine fifths should be part of the solution. And so, yeah, solving inequalities involving radicals can be a lot more challenging, especially when it's an even radical, because there's there's issues with the domain, with the range. They're not one to one necessarily. Uh, at least the, the squares, the squares and the fourth powers are not one to one. So it's a little bit more advanced here. You can really understand how to solve this inequality. You were really set when it comes to inequalities. You, you, you're going to be hard fetched to find a more challenging inequality in a college algebra setting than the one we just saw here.